Hello everybody, welcome. Oh my god, there's a blitz. Okay, I didn't even think this was an actual defense. I thought the Norse were on defense, and I think the Norse thought he was on defense as well. <laughs> Here we are, rounds of 64, and Raka and his ogres versus Gilead and his ogres. In the booth with me is Purple Chest. Hello. Hello. What a fantastic <laughs> intro there, Jim. Completely unspoiled by me. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it, this is an incredibly odd setup. I too had set up behind the ogres, thinking they were about to set up to receive. Um, but it turns out, uh, and, as you, <laughs> you have also swapped the view, that we were both wrong. And the Norse were receiving, just uh, not convinced they knew that either. <laughs> and now, of course, the Blitz has further muddied the waters. What an interesting drive this is going to be. Yeah, all of a sudden, this setup from the Norse looks not genius, but not as terrible. <laughs> well, I mean, in terms of Blitz defence, it's right up there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And uh, there was a bonehead there, so no Blitz on the Blitz <laughs> from the Orcas. <laughs> That's the theme of, uh, of the 2020 rule set. Yes, yes, very good. Not really doing much on your blitz. Um, however, we've still got a, a whole chunk of ogres that are going to come piling over, aren't they? Yes. Yes. So. There'll be some yeah, derping this, and uh, some derping and some base, base, basing. What, what this is going to do, of course, is arrest the momentum that the Norse had already given away yet further. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But unfortunately, put in that assist for some reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> on this blitz that would have been two dice anyway. Yes, turning a two die sense. into a two die um, <laughs> now gives him two knob, uh, knob last to smash this turn, which is very kind of him. Mm. And I don't like where that little uh, knob last stopped, right on the diagonal where surely that ogre would have wanted to come wandering in. Yeah, and actually not not that aggressive from Anraka, is he? He's not no, not uh, not basing up the uh, Berserker at the front, just in front of this Yeti. Of course, giving uh, the Yeti a very natural target if you did. Um, I would certainly have based up the uh, the Fen lineman on the far right of this Norse defensive boat. Yes. Um, you know, it's not a runner with uh, Norse, and if the Yeti's blitzing out that side of where everything's going on, that's probably all to the good. Yeah. Taking it away from the ball area, so I think that's uh, an opportunity missed to get quite aggressive here from the uh, the ogres. I wonder if uh, I wonder if the, the Norse are thinking of putting in a couple of guys and blitzing this ogre with the claw palm. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a nice angle there as well to either free one of the Norsemen from the line of scrimmage or to push one of the other ogres off that area. Yeah. Um, as you go in with your with your yeti, isn't there? It's um, it's a, a bewitching little square. People do love. <laughs> Blitzing squares with frenzy. Yes. Uh, and rightly so, it gives you all sorts of lovely options. Yeah. And then he could just boomer at the end of the turn, couldn't he? And just, yep. <laughs> just smash three augers potentially. Even if he fumbles, it's probably not terrible. Yeah, you're going to need to tag the little knoblar two to the right, but you can do that from the outside, still leaving places for boomer to throw. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can leave boomer in maybe just one tackle zone if you leverage the other. Norseman out and a single dodge then leaves him free to suicide bomb. I know it's a distasteful term but it's just we all know what I mean to throw the bomb and not particularly care if he fumbles it and drops it on himself. Yes. Yes. Probably stay away from that please. <laughs> <laughs> yes it is a bit dodgy isn't it? Um, I'll find another way of describing it. Yes thank um, you. Throw a bomb and not care if it fails. How's that? Yes. That's yes. Because even more tactful. Yeah, because at this stage, even if if he can get rid of that Norse, it's not even bad if you fumble, is it? You you know no. you're hitting you're hitting Fine. ogres and Norsemen and fuck Norse. And you're, you're you're trusting one of the advantages of it, which is your his AV nine. Yes, which is why he's on the line of scrimmage in the first place. That's why he's got a goblin um, as his model because to make it clear yeah. he's armor nine. Um, yeah, the same as the goblin one, which is AV seven. Yeah, yeah, really helpful. <laughs> And it also helps, of course, that he has block and not dodge, so he's a completely different piece with nothing in common except the fact that they throw bombs. Yes. Uh, but the same model is obviously perfect. Well, I mean, this is why I've got supreme faith in, in uh, Cyanide for, you know, making Blood Bowl 3. I'm sure they're going to yeah. pull out all the Their general steps. competence and attention to detail. Yeah. Uh, That's impositive <laughs> me. So, um... But in passing, it is why you often see him hired by dwarves, by Norse, thrown on the line of scrimmage, uh, or thrown somewhere where he can get blitzed. 
and many a player will blitz him thinking he is the goblin that he looks exactly like, but he isn't. He has AV9 and he has block, uh, and it's hilarious when people continuously blitz him, knowing that he's going off at half time anyway. <laughs> he also has thick skull, by the way, so you know he's a proper dwarf. Yeah, no, no pile on there. Um, no, um, I suppose Noblar fouling is a thing, but there's, there's a dirty player Noblar hiding, ready to strike. So, uh, well, I'd still want to smash his face in. I would, I would not want to pile. I would, I would, I would have probably. I don't know, maybe he's not even blitzed with him. But, you know, the fact that he's got to follow up. Uh, yeah. Got himself in a bit of trouble there. Good to be made that dodge, I think. Yes, there are other pieces, aren't there? But, I mean, as you look around, sometimes what you think is going to be a mighty blow piece turns out to be Fend. Very Fend heavy, this Norse team. Yeah, very Fend. Very Fendly. Uh, and he's, he's, he's left off the tackler. And uh, is this a Dawn's? So he's prioritised Fend dirty players. Over Dauntless. Yeah. Oh, he's strength two, though. Yikes. <laughs> okay, fair enough then. I, I, I would leave Easy him off as well. Yeah. But yeah the, I'd he... leave him off on a more permanent basis, but <laughs> yes. perhaps he didn't have the time pre chalice. You know, lots of the races were very, very tight. Yeah. But the, the, the Rackle piece to not be on is bewildering, isn't it? It is, yes. Very much so. And he didn't go for the to he didn't go for the bomb toss. I really like going for the bomb toss at the end of the day. Yeah, me too. Who cares if you fumble? And uh, hello everybody in chat, hello Singolo, congratulations. Uh, you get two rolls at pulling a five or a six, which is, you know, reasonably decent. And if so, you can tog it in behind the ogres just in front of you and perhaps knock a couple of them over. Yeah. There he is, AV9 tanking that hit, of course. <laughs> yeah. The question is, does he does he like foul? Because like Rick likes fouling a lot with Noblast, doesn't he? Mm. The problem is, if you foul here and obviously get sent off, then like you know, at the moment the threat of the foul is stopping the berserker from piling on, isn't it? Whereas if you do like you know, if you foul, you you know, there's the argument you can make for snowballing removals, but maybe you foul without dirty player just to try and you know, I don't know. It's interesting. Isn't I mean, so far, I, I I mean, I think it's very situational. Remember, we are actually only in the ogre's turn one because of the blitz. <laughs> yes. But so far, we've had good survivability on the Noblars. And if we you know, see a couple more turns and none have been removed, well, he's going straight for it. Oh, so There's your answer. I hate that foul. Two assists on an AV9. And not shockingly, he loses him. But does take Boomer out. Yeah, yeah, he does. Which is, you know, you'd take that trade. Yes, you would. I mean, that was an incredibly lucky. Like, really, two assist foul and thick skull. That, yep. was, that was an incredibly lucky foul. Yeah, it was an incredibly poor choice that paid off, which is always brilliant when Blood Bowl does that. Everyone loves that. Yeah, yeah. I can but hear it, Artemis it's, it is celebrating still a right now. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a high roll choice. And maybe the Ogres feel in this situation they really need to get everything off the pitch. If not, that AV9 is going to keep standing up in Ogres' way and tanking those hits. And yeah. now, of course, the Norse only have AV7 to tank any hits. Yeah. Um, so perhaps it was a very wise choice for the ogre strategically, uh, just potentially. But now it means not the greatest foul. Yeah. yeah, now he can he can pile on with a yet he, he can pile on with a berserker currently. That's that's the key thing. I, I would have been more worried about those. It's, particular yes, pieces. The, de the deterrent is a huge factor with a dirty player and pylons definitely. Yeah. Uh, but you know, perhaps the AV nine, as I said, it, it is going to mean there is nothing there to stop these ogres just getting hold of AV seven, and that's. That's a big upside that we we shouldn't overlook. Yep, and there's there's no there's no there's, there's no uh, there's no Ulf Werners, is there? So the the only armor no. is this is this Yeti. Yeah, and he ideally is going to be on the ground, having just piled onto an ogre. Yeah. Now he's gone for the weakest of the pack, but it is the one out on the edge. He's Not a bad good. place. Surely he's piling. Yeah. See, already, I would have rather, I would have rather traded my dirty player, <laughs> Nobla, for this gets him. Claw yeah. Bomb Yeti. But never mind. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're right, Jim. Perhaps the freedom to do that, knowing that that uh, that dirty player was off the pitch, is why we've seen that ogre removal. But uh, straight in with the Apo, yeah. no worries there. Uh, that drops his store of Apos to one. Yeah. Um. No, no, he, he has his a baby, apples of are gone. Um, his, his apples are gone. He only and, and Racker was the overdog. 
Um, oh gosh, yes. And Sorry. the Norse induced boomer and not a second apple, but a babe. A yeah, good babe. babe. Or a, a keg. A keg in the new rules when we're politically correct. <laughs> but So yes, that is the apple gone. Mm. Yeah, huge. Instant Kaz. Even with Dirty Player off, if the Norse pile and you still foul the reg regular Nobelite. Yeah, I think he probably should. I mean... Yeah. I think the Yeti is the key way that... I mean, there's so many ways that the Ogres lose this, mainly by being Ogres. <laughs> but it is a key dynamic by which they lose this. Yeah. I mean, if that happens again, if they lose another Ogre, it, it's probably all over. Mm. I mean, it probably is anyway, but, you know, you should pretend. <laughs> yes, like like Elliot, we'll pretend it's not all over instantly. <laughs> yes, Brain on Slugs, one team is Ogres, so this favours Norse massively, even more so than it would favour normal teams, I think. Maybe against other ogres. Yes. That yes. might be a matchup that favours ogres. Yes, an ogre. I'd have, to really, ogres. <laughs> I'd have to really dig into the fumble stats. And they actually weirdly don't do that badly, uh, depending how they've built, against um, brand new rookie chaos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Teams without. Um, what they need is something that can't dodge and has no block, and they can just beat to hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Lizardmen, they're surprisingly good against Lizardmen because yeah, Lizardmen's strength yeah. of strength, advantage of strength, isn't really that much an advantage, advantage when they've got five to counter them and one to get hit. They're obviously terrible at the start against Dwarves, but if they can get quickly up to six Ogres with little bloat elsewhere, they're pretty good against Dwarves. Once you know, Dwarves, a couple of guard isn't going to do Dwarves any good against them, um, Ogres. I, I... So at sort of 11 to 11.50, Ogres are quite tricky for Dwarves. Right, I'm, I'm not. I'm not calling you wrong, PC. But I'd like to see your stats and see if you've ever lost to a. I'm not that. Yeah, I mean, I, I might not be the best benchmark, Jim. You know, modesty aside, I'm not terrible with balls. But, but it's it's a tougher game than people think it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, but yes, really, against rookie chaos, rookie Nurgle, even Camry, they can uh, do horrible things to Camry. It's break up you want for the versus ones, um, and you should probably do it in like Discord so that it's not it's not horrendous. <laughs> Two loner skinks. Yep, that's what I do, KLZD. I, I love to make use of loner skinks with, uh, with things. Yeah, exactly, Penemu. Like the really terrible starting teams, <laughs> and, and 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 strangely, like the good t like the good team, like lizards. Yes. Li lizards is the big one, I think, because yeah. lizards are really good against strength three teams. Because yeah. because you know you you've you've got a huge advantage with, with seven of your players, but then you just don't have that advantage against ogres or halflings. Yes, or and the strength four is no better against the noblars than anyone else is. Yeah. It doesn't really confer any advantage, uh, and it still isn't enough to really take on the ogres. So lizards do really struggle there, yeah. and they're lacking block as well, of course, but, and, and tackle, which I mean, they also struggle for the same reasons against flings and goblins. Yes, you know, who are just as happy marking Asaurus as they are marking. I mean, happier to some degree than marking as they in Norse Yeah. Oof, the Dublé skulls. Now this is a, this is quite optimistic. This trying to rescue the yeti and sneak up the side at the same time, isn't it, Jim? He'd, al he'd already sneaked up the, the side. I think he'll pull back a little bit just to get the yeti hit. Hmm. I'm certainly not sure against break tackle. I'd be that confident keeping both safe. But the break tackle ogre is in the toughest spot of the lot. Yeah, I think we'll see him pull back a little bit. I think you're right. I certainly don't think he can push onwards. He just hasn't given himself enough to go nope. with. Even if he pulls up the Norse from behind. Oh, he is. Nope, he's completely... Okay. T he's just reversing the field. Yeah. <laughs> they call him Tato. <laughs> Instant Tato. Oh, well, you love to see it, don't you, Jim? The old days of the Tato. 
<laughs> wow. I mean, he's got a point. What are the ogres going to do about it? I mean, the block one could run around the edge, but it's going to take it half a week to get there. The Snotlings can just dodge through this pathetic attempt at a screen, but, you know, <laughs> if they do, what are they going to do about it? It's a blodge piece. Yeah. Full... Full space oh, cadaver. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a dog. No, don't, that's, don't, don't <laughs> that's stop terrible. that. That's terrible. That's Of all the squares that piece could be in, <laughs> that's just so bad. Do you want to show them with your little mouse why it's so bad? Jim? Yes, I will, yes. Um, okay, well, let's wait until he's actually confirmed that he's stopping there. Yes. In case he's listening to us, of course. Yes. I mean, there are worse squares. You know, he could try and dodge between the ogres or something. That would be worse. <laughs> could just bring him completely back here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. It is indeed a gate. Yes, people call it Les gate. Les were... I don't like that particular term. No, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know who... Like, gate stop things, first of all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and near gaping a void, I would call it. It's not a gaping void. A gaping void one doesn't need to dodge through. But yeah. it's certainly a hool. Yeah, it's a hool. Is it? This guy just isn't adding it's a anything, hool. is he? It's a, it's a no. hool. It's a hool. It's a hool, yeah. They are spatially not helping each other in ways that they could be with very small, minor changes to their positioning. Now, yes. as we see that, both down is taken. That's interesting. And the ogre does suffer from the claw mighty to stun itself. But the yeti is fine. The yeti piled on PC. Oh, sorry, yes. That's why it hasn't ended the turn. <laughs> Yes. I was too busy enjoying the word hool. <laughs> hool. <laughs> it's a huel. Hool. Yeah. So anyway, I'll, I'll show you with my mouse now why this is terrible. Because yes, it's like this guy and this he's not adding anything, is he? So they can just go no. straight through this double marked yeah. square on a, on a 4 plus for ogres or 2 plus for elves. Whereas if he dropped him back to here, um, yes. then it would have been very difficult. But he's not going for it anyway. No, which is a little bit of a shame, because at the very least he could have pinned that uh, annoying ball carrier to the edge of the field, which would have been fun to see. Mm. But yes, a definite mistake, not capitalised on. I think that's a risk I would have taken, particularly this early in a half with uh, with three re-rolls in hand. Yeah, probably. And putting some pressure on the ball, of course, is less pressure on the rest of your forces, because it makes them refocus in that direction and away from killing you. And you're ogres, so you're rubbish. Like that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? If you, if you were yeah. if you were chaos or orcs or elves or whatever, then yes, maybe you do just blitz like the the furthest forward linemen and then put some pressure on, and then yeah. they're forced to score and you win or whatever. But uh, I think with with ogres, you've got to you've got to do those riskier those riskier. I would have liked that. The four plus for the two. I, I think it was it was worth a go. Um, you can do the rest of your a lot of the rest of your turn first. Perhaps leave a snotling or two to be responsive. Um, I mean, in the end, he settled for basing the ball, which is a one in nine fail. It isn't a plus agility ball carrier. So to dodge off is a one in nine fail. And that's a decent position for the Noblar just behind it. Yeah. Uh, making it very hard to get the assists to knock the Ogre off. It, it would have been a terrible thing to Saurus dodge, Kales, because Saurus, you'd definitely be favourite to win. <laughs> so, so Saurus, you would definitely just blitz one of the linemen. And yeah, so the risk management, I mean, as Jim's alluding to, the risk management has to be assessed in terms of, you know, am I going to win this game anyway? Or, hang on, I've got half a shot, but I didn't expect to have any hope at all because I'm ogres. Should I take that half a shot? <laughs> to which my answer would be, well, yes. <laughs> Don't do that. That sounds good. <laughs> Yep. I mean, Ogres, to my knowledge, I don't know if this is true, Jim, but I hear they've won exactly one game in 40-odd chalices. They've won two now. They've won two. Two. Fantastic. Yep. yep. They beat Dark Elves one time, and they beat uh, they beat Lizardmen one time. And if their win rate was extrapolated, they've got a one in four million chance of winning chalice. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> So if I get a sniff of a four plus to maybe do something, I might I might be more tempted. <laughs> yeah. than if I were dark elves in the same position. But of course, if you were dark elves, that would have been a two plus. So you would have gone for it as elves. To be fair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but if I were dark elves facing a four plus, I might feel that. Yeah. I won't panic because four pluses are just. I mean, that's the dice of insanity to an elf coach. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, Billy, and that's still a better chance than the Amazons. They will never win Chalice. <laughs> well, Amazons, of course, have a 0% chance of winning Chalice. Yeah. That is no. 
Dimmy G <laughs> knows the truth. <laughs> okay, so we haven't blitzed the Noblar behind the Ogre. We haven't blitzed the Ogre, uh, despite his lack of block, making two red dice. He's going to blitz with the uh, air. He's going to blitz with the. He's going to blitz with the ball carrier. Dauntless. He's got Dauntless. Because he's got Dauntless, yes. Uh, but even if it's red dice, it's not terrible odds. Uh, yeah. But it probably it's going to be hard not to score, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's why I didn't like running up that turn. <laughs> no, I know. So the answer to what you do here is do your last turn really differently. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. There'll be a brief hiatus whilst the coach looks desperately for other options and realises he hasn't left himself any. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm feeling he's also looking at the Kaz box. I'm feeling he has insufficiently norsed this team so far. With yeah. which I do agree. Yeah, the only removal was the send-off. Outrageous. Ooh. Well, I mean, he did uh, knock out that ogre. Yeah. Which, oh, yeah, that's course, true. Yeah, the app off true. goes. So, I mean, that's some, that's some progress, but... Yeah. You'd expect to see a couple of things with the nice big red things over them by now. Or at least you'd want to. Interesting, moving the break tackle over further towards the backfield. He can um, go here for one. He's still well. tagged by one, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Chorfs have won the most. I think they would have won the most even without Crucifer. <laughs> Chorfs have won a lot. Yes, the most successful race is Russian. Um, <laughs> And yes, I think it's it's Chorfs, followed by Crucifer with Chorfs, followed by other races. <laughs> if you add both Crucifer with Chorfs and Chorfs together, then they win by a mile. Don't they? Yeah. Uh, just because they don't really have bad matchups, that's the thing. Right? Uh, the problem with like the heavy bash teams, um, like Nurgle, aren't so good against agility teams as yeah. Chorfs are, because Chorfs have got loads of tackle. Um, and like, uh, what, what are they called? Hybrid teams. They're not as good against hybrid teams because they haven't got the tackle. Um, so, like, so the, the diverse meta of Chalice makes uh, that's that favours Chorfs. And then when they have the like, when Chorfs have to play the heavy bash teams, yes, the heavy bash teams are favoured, but it's still very, very easy for the Chorf Claw Pommers just to take over the game and win. Yes, the so Chorfs. Chorfs tend to come in perfectly built and having just about everything they need at a good TV to enter, dominate some of the smaller teams, but still get some advantage and maybe Wizards against some of the really big hitters, which gives them another little chance there. Mm. Um, but really, it's that they are, I would say, more responsive to the hybrid and dodge teams than the true hitters are, because the true hitters in CCL exist in an environment where they rarely face those teams and have to be built to deal with other monster hitty teams. Um, but it's a long conversation exactly why CCL has evolved the way it has. But every every meta, every pool has its you know, its DNA, its dynamism, and its responses to that by the people that game there. Uh, and then that drives uh, other behaviours over time. It's, it's fascinating, but also incredibly boring and irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's literally what I just said, Kelsity. The, the, the heavy hitters like Nurgle do counter Chorfs, but Chorfs are still totally capable of beating the Nurgle just by claw pommeling them. Yeah. Like it's, it's not even unlikely that they just claw pommel them and win. And as I said, will be leaner and more efficient and likely hence get the odd inducement or two to help them. Yeah, and will and more likely to win all of their other games <laughs> yes, exactly. than the Nurgle are. Yeah, so they're more likely to have got into that matchup past the Dark Elves or High Elves or Pro Elves, yeah. whereas the Nurgle may well have fallen to those. Yeah. There's reasons in every competition why the dynamic is as it is. Uh, and why people play when they play and what they play, because people are munchkins and will do anything to win. <laughs> yeah. So as we said, it, the Blitz worked and it got away, but they, they weren't able to control the Noblars. And now the uh, the break tackle Ogre is up within range too. Yeah. It's all starting to look very, very feisty for these Norse. How yeah. much longer can they keep this ball both in their hand, but not score a touchdown? And now he's I a one say in nine. No longer, Jim. He's it's a, now a one in nine. I don't see a way out that isn't. Yeah, so he, he's he's got to stay where he is, maybe, and then so he can he can block one snotling and blitz the other, and then just stay the, where he is. 
The only sane way to do that is to get something in front of this break tackle ogre, though. Yes. yes. And I don't see how he both... I mean, he'd, he'd need to get the pals, wouldn't he? And then dodge something out to pop in there. So if he hit the the Noblar that's nearest that ogre to create the way in, Maybe. and did anything, anything to it at all, then there is a way in in front of it. But even then, it's so risky. I think he's got to score. I don't know. I, I think I think it's riskier trying to score than just punching a nobbler. <laughs> I suppose if it brings the two over from the failed one that's downed, there is ways to tie that break tackle over down. Yeah. So he's just going to block with him. See what happens. Only two. I don't know. I would like to have made it a three. Yeah, me too. And that means that he can't get one in front of this ogre. So it has to tie it down some other way. Because right now it two pluses out to its uh, northwest. I think he's going to 1D it at the end. I think that's about all he's going to yeah, do. Yes, so it is block free, isn't it? So he can move it that way. Right, so he's doing it this way. Oh, okay. This was very rowdy. When I mean, that's a great guy to hit, though, wasn't it? It was a great guy to hit, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. It's the, for some reason, leader uh, Noblar. Yeah, I, I like leader, Nebula, leader Noblars, to be honest. But uh... It's a player that's going to die and then not give you leader in the second half. Oh, I, mine doesn't die because I, uh, I protect him. Okay. <laughs> so it's a player you can't use anywhere on the field. Because ogres can't protect things. No, I always protect him. He can't, he's the ball carrier. Sprint, sure feet, leader. Brilliant. Uh, at that point, maybe, as the third after the first two. Because then he can run away, effectively. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's... I mean, he used to say if it's right or wrong, he said, I'm saying it's wrong, Jim. Yeah, well... Now, if we do block this ogre, we make it easier for it to get to our ball carrier. And if we don't, it can dodge out on a two-plus. <laughs> so I'm interested. That it's great if we block it and get them both down. That's a wonderful result. Yeah. But it's a one in six to do that. And it's frenzy so, as well. So it's into an uphill, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's really, yeah, it's, it's really dodgy. This turn, you know, some things don't work out quite the way you see them in your head. And I have a feeling this might be one of those. Yeah. Or maybe there wasn't any head looking. That is another option. <laughs> Oh, well, it doesn't matter. He gets the perfect result. Oh, for f... Because he's left a three. Also, if the ogre gets there, it's three die. I mean, it is yeah. now two plus two plus, yep. unless the pylon works, which it doesn't. He's got he's to bring somebody up somehow. He's got to bring somebody up somehow, which there is no easy road to do. No, four, three, I guess. Because if you look at where the ogres are, they are situated the two squares apart with the not single dodge through. <laughs> yes. Um, which is good. The ogres done good things. There's no, there's no, there's no heel to go through. <laughs> two plus two plus for three die. I quite like that. Oh, I he think... just he made the, he made the dice oh, rolls and Jesus. he just did nothing well. with him. Oh dear me. <laughs> and still okay. So it's now going to be two plus two plus for two die. Yeah, but you just dodge that guy, don't you? You just yeah, dodge you that guy first. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Well, at least I do. <laughs> okay. So you first of all have to make a 1 in 36 dodge, and then you've only got one Noblar to recover with. That's what he achieved, Jim. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, you may say that's not very much, and I may completely agree, but it's not nothing, is it? <laughs> it's not nothing. <laughs> no. There's no way that's defined as absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Got touched to here. He moved the wrong square, didn't he? He should have gone to here because he doesn't want him to catch the ball. Um, yeah. Although it puts a nice screen in. Um, it does. Despite the lack of tackles in it. So I'm, I'm slightly forgiving it. Yeah. Okay, so we put the rerun in on the first two plus. Gets the pow! Is he going to get away with this? Second two plus works fine. Gets the pow! Oh, well, this is one of those times where he's got what he deserved. The Ogres have played that really well. Whoa. They did all the right moves. Did all the right tyings up. I didn't oh, even one, mind. The other one cornered. Wow. <laughs> Again, a little bit of justice in Blood Bowl. Lovely to see. Uh, I love that Apo, though. The very rowdy Apo on that runner. Yeah, incredibly rowdy. 
Boy, howdy. That's for a man who expects to win this tie and will do whatever it takes to do so. Mm -hmm. And then, I was going to say, I love the fact that this one ogre didn't move. Now, it was tempting to put him into that gap, tying up the, the Norse. There's one Norse that isn't tied up at all. He can still go there, but now he can also come and stand right next to this goblin. I was, I was just choice. about to say as well, as somebody who's played a lot of ogres, it's oh, also it's really good to just not activate him and get yeah. this get this snotling yeah. up. Uh, the snotling could have come in front there to like right. make the screen. That's, and just yeah, that's now a bright bugger, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> so the final snotling has to come and help. You can just dodge. So I, I'll move that snot in there and just literally not activate the ogre because it's. You've got to think yeah. every time, like, how much is it adding? Particularly with the reroll the... gone. Yeah. You know, I can't emergency reroll the bonehead, so should he just stay? So you might, yeah, get the gob. Perhaps if the nobbler had gone there first, then you could try it? Maybe. I would have been very tempted to just not bother, though. Because there's still the very easy dodge past the nobbler. Yeah. But no, you, I mean, it's, you, you're probably right. I'm not an ogre player. <laughs> Maybe not acting, you know, it's it was a good call, but he's, he's, he's done so much that turn, and I've really liked so much of what the ogre player's done so far. Yeah, there's just an argument for not, uh, not activating, obviously. It's, you've just got to work out how much better it is somewhere else, haven't you? That's, that's the thing you've yeah. always got to think about. Like, how bad is it if he boneheads, and how much better is it for him to be somewhere else? Okay, uh, we last heard from the Yeti several weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if anyone knows what it's what it's up to, how it feels about life, do let us know. Drop us a line. Uh, we'd love to hear from it. All is forgiven. Please come home. <laughs> yeah, Gary, and they they stalled optimistically. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> There's a saucy jump up. Yeah. Into the pylon because that's worked so well so far. <laughs> and he's lost his now, budget for this turn, so it's not it's not easy to get around, is it? It's although, not. Although, although they are titchy, uh, not bad. So that this, this isn't a minus. Like they yeah. don't exert minuses. So this would be, no. but it's still two dodges, right? It's still a three. It is still two dodges. And that is that is not easy. Yep. Um, I don't hate the uphill here. I think it's the probably best way to recover this drive. I think it's definitely the best, yes, because an uphill with block is about 30% of fail, yeah. isn't it? So it's it's literally yeah. better than dodge. It's it also needs dodge, nothing. You know? It needs no assists in there. You can just do it now, and if it works, and you even get a push, you've then got three lovely responsive Norsemen to pile all over this lovely ball. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, the only So it's, it's, you do it now. Yeah. I guess you think about if you move this guard, Fender guy is... is you know, he's moved, yeah. he's moved the yet, he's, he hasn't he? So I guess you think about... Yeah, he, he, can, he can move. Yeah, that's fine. There's not much he's going to do that's relevant, I don't think. No. But pulling him over to the right, maybe, in case they throw that nobbler down. But you need something in case the ogres throw the nobbler. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just so you need something back. backfield. Yeah, just pull him back. Pull it back centrally a bit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he's got to uphill. There's no, there's no you need to think worst case scenario. So where the nobbler would land if it was thrown and crashes, and then also where it would run to if it doesn't crash. Because if this two dies, what you do next, which it should be, then if it fails, the next thing that the ogres probably do is throw the nobbler. So yeah. either throw it from there, or it runs forward and then gets thrown. Well, he's disregarded that, and he's just going to run right up. Huh? <laughs> well, I mean, probably it will all be all right, Jim. Yep. Probably. Um, probably. Does the uphills, gets his lovely push. Yeah. Yeah, that was the obvious play. I guess, I guess, yeah, activating this ogre and, and moving him there was essential, really, wasn't it? Because then this uphill wouldn't have worked if there was another yeah. ogre in front of that yeah. ogre. So, yeah, I guess it, it really was worth activating. But well, I do think you were right, and move the knobla first is the way to do it. Yeah, I like that, yeah. Oh, well, he's... Still dodged for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Could have literally just moved somebody uh, else first. <laughs> what, uh, and didn't. The, with the, yeah. There were two other Norse that didn't need to move and could have just directly blitzed. Yeah. Um, both of which had block. Uh, I guess neither had frenzy. So perhaps it was the frenzy he wanted. Yeah. But if you want to hit with frenzy, then just move somebody out of the way. <laughs> First. Yeah, yeah. Not saying it's terrible, but it was, you know, absolutely terrible. 
I mean, I, so far, I'm, I'm genuinely on the Ogre's side, Jim. I think they've played quite well. Yeah, he didn't see Even the knob line. Yeah. Sorry, it was directly uh, Oh, hidden the bright. Wasn't... Yeah, maybe so. The yeah. hidden knob of doom. Yeah. Oh, you've got to learn to look for these things. Yeah. I mean, everyone cheats that way with big things. They put little things behind them all the time. <laughs> yeah. I've yet to meet a wood elf coach that doesn't feel they can hide something behind the tree against me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that includes good... people like Jim, who should know better. But, <laughs> you know. Hey, you've got to take everything you can get. It's slivers of equity, Jim, just in case. Exactly, slivers of equity. At least it's not as bad as taking taking an hour and a half on your offensive drive, so there's no time to play your opponent's drive on tabletop. That's the worst <laughs> thing, isn't it? <laughs> That's that the genuinely worst. is the worst thing. <laughs> I mean, I I would love chess clocks to be mandatory. It would just be such a glorious thing, but it's it's never going to happen. I don't think. No, I don't think so. Either, so. And I also don't kind of want to be the dick that suggests it. Mm. <laughs> I need the pickle. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Right. So this ball looks pretty secure now. The Norse are in all sorts of trouble. They're starting to look a little thin for the second half. I mean, if their 1 KO gets back, they're, they're fine. They've got the numbers on field. Um, and actually, some of the better ones they chose to leave off will be on the field, interestingly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the team has been improved by these two removals. <laughs> well, I mean, no. this guy's strength too, isn't he? So, so he's still pretty terrible, actually. He is still pretty terrible. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Rackler is like, just an incredible bonus. I don't. I can't. I don't. <laughs> I mean, so he's still alive to defend against Noblars? But he thought he was on defence. <laughs> he did think he was on defence, so yeah, that doesn't work either, does it? Uh, I don't know, Jim. I don't. I, not everything is to be understood by the likes of us. That's true. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, you like the GFI from the this ogre to here, yeah. Yeah, I can I can see that because then obviously you get a proper screen with with actual tackle zones, but it's yeah. still hard for the Norse to roll three pluses, isn't it? So it, you're already putting him out off enough, and I guess if you fail the GFI, it makes it a bit weaker. It's it's a it's a pretty imperfect screen by every means, isn't it? It's a three plus to get through it. You yeah. dodge from one nobla. Yeah. From the ogre tackle zone into the noblar tackle zone, which doesn't yeah. exist. It's only a three plus. Yeah, yeah, through here. This is, so this is so like I, a I, gate, isn't it? As, the, yeah, as people I like to call it. it. Oh, yes. I do think it should, or a hole. <laughs> I do think it should have been <laughs> improved. Yeah, yeah probably, probably um, was worth it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm forgiving him in the majesty of how he took this ridiculous Norse stall, stall down. Uh, and that, on balance, most things he's done has been good, whereas most things the Norse have done have been less so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, true. It would let you get the goblar. Get it would let you get the gob. The yeti. Noblar, we've heard right? from the yeti, Phineas North. Um, oh, we're all a bit calmer about it now. Uh, the yeti is back involved. Uh, it, it has been seen by some of its clan, its teammates. Um, and it is somewhere near an ogre and may may have some relevance to the game again at some point. I double GFI, um, that, that was my idea, forward. double GFI, but... Yeah, that's not bad. But the dodge would have put, put him in a better, situa better situation to, uh, like, return. To capitalise afterwards, yeah, and yeah. less imminent danger of surfing. <laughs> yeah. With all of his go for it's used up. Yeah. However, he dodges haven't done it very well, have they? So I kind of understand why the, the 2 plus 2 plus beat the 3 plus in his head, but I think it was time for the big boy trousers and the 3 plus. Yes. The 2 plus 2 plus was definitely more likely to work, wasn't it? Just... Yeah. Weak as maths. Yes. <laughs> he can lob He can lob the Noblar here if he wants, can't he? He could pick it up and then uh, I mean, lob don't the... don't hate it. Yeah, he's got the one free, three behind the ball. Yeah. Um, Certainly, if it's going to score, it's it needs to probably be lobbed this turn, doesn't it? But he, nah, I don't know. I don't know, Jim. It means 
standing the other ogre up as a barrier to the Norse that want to come streaming after it, and that means getting smashed up by the Yeti with one of your better ogres, it might be better just not to. You've won the half, you've stopped them scoring, you've damaged a few Norse. I think he is settling just for a nice defensive shape, isn't he? Yeah, it looks that way. I think maybe he should maybe he shouldn't have covered with this one. So then, if if he'd had this one, he could have picked up, handed off to this one, and then yeah. thrown that one, and then it could have moved, and then he would have maybe got the counter score. Yeah, I, I mean the counter to that, I suppose, is that he he put it he made it a three die to surf, um, he which didn't. made it even safer. <laughs> he didn't because he stood the other one up later. So oh, did he? Oh, yeah. Well then, yeah, it was just shit. <laughs> yeah, it was just shit. <laughs> it was just I'm still forgiving him because he's done lots of other things very well. Yeah. He's a, he's a lovely fella. He's just We've just all shit. wasted a tackle zone here and there, haven't we? What's one <laughs> tackle zone between friends? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make him a terrible blood ball player. It was just uh, it was just you know, the poor decision, but there's been lots of good ones. I I'm guess it, to Mr. Possum. the idea is that if he if he boneheads with the ogre, at least he's got that guy tied up a little bit, hasn't he? You know, I guess yeah. that's the idea. Right? It wasn't yeah. utterly irrelevant, but I liked, as you say, like just going for it, just because, just because your ogre's right, and you you know you haven't got much chance. You could easily not yeah. score on your own drive. Um, I would, well, I, would I mean, having seen the Norse play, do you, do you still think that? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. It's just too easy for them to just. It is. They've only got to get. You only need two ogres boneheading in a turn, and all falls apart. Yeah. And the Norse do keep. I mean, that Apo, I didn't think it was going to save the touchdown. I still don't think it will. But the Rowdy KO Apo at least means that that really, really good, um, you know, plus move. Dauntless piece is going to be around for the second half, which I think could be key. Yeah. Also, we'll see the Rackle piece, which might be useful against some of these dodging things, Jim, I think. It might be. I don't know what the hell this knob, these two Noblars are doing. This Noblar could have, like, been here, and this Noblar yeah. could have been there. You've got to, you've got to make those yeah. GFIs because you're just letting yeah. in 3D for free. <laughs> yeah. You can't let him 3D for free. And then this guy can run around for, for free. It's like, he's not going to though. He's not just going to take the instant 3D. He's going to run around the back with his best recovery. He's hitting an ogre. He's gonna, he's hitting oh, the, the ball isn't there. Yeah. He hasn't picked it up. I thought there was another no. one with the ball. He hasn't, he's left no, the ball on the no, floor. The ball is, he's decided the ball on the floor was fine, which oh, is a decision I don't, I don't celebrate. No, I like that even less. I thought it's, he was. I thought he was a nobbler with it, but yeah. Oh God, leaving on the floor is even worse. And then didn't put. It just put two ogre tackle zones on it, knowing there was going to be a dauntless piece free, which I think is. Yeah. Not not a thing I like. No, this nobbler had to GFI to here then, didn't it? Had to. Just oh, yeah. had to. Yeah. Just too easy even to pick it up. Yeah. And indeed, at least one of his just ran away, and here we go. He's going to pay the ultimate price, which is. Sad because until that awful turn, seven, uh, seven he, he coached a very nice half in general. Yep. And I felt had earned the right to have stopped these Norse, but it doesn't look like he's going to. No. It depends. The Norse still have time to not do this well. I think he's going to do it right. Looks like he has. Okay. He's failed the first throw. Fails the re-roll. Hey. <laughs> the ogres okay. are still in it. What do the ogres do? Just punch things? It's really unlikely for them to score, isn't it? Should probably just punch things. Uh, yes, I mean... It's not impossible. It's just really, really, really tricky. I mean, it would need... You need to get the ball into the hands of one of the Noblars just in front of where the ball is, as far as the Ogres are concerned. And then you do have an Ogre that can theoretically dodge out and throw it, but then it would have to be an overthrow by... You know, because they can go up to three spaces in front of Heather of Six, that is their maximum, it would have to be probably all three of those. Yeah. And then a couple of go-for-its on the end. And he's got no re-rolls. So I'm, I'm going to say it's not that likely, Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I've been wrong before. 
And uh, FD, the failed pass is only a turnover if the ball hits the floor. So, like, the, as long as somebody on the moving team catches the ball, catches it's fine. It, yeah. Oh, look, pickups, though. Pickups are failed just got turnovers, even if somebody catches it. But passes on enough turnovers. If, unless they're on the court. Well, I, so I think the Ogres sort of earned that. The, that turn seven was pretty grim. Um, it's, it's a classic example of, you know, see the surf, but perhaps didn't think too much about anything else, and then made it up as he went along, and it ended up really awful. Yeah. It was a fumble. I, could, I kind of understand not wanting to pick it up, but at least getting more tackle zones on it than two was essential, surely. Yes. Yeah, and that Nobla would have would have got right in the way, wouldn't it? It would have been, it would have been, it was, it was a yeah. really great position for the Nobla. Yeah. With sidestep and everything. And, well, and because they've all got sidestep, of course, that the they um, you know even if it, it it can't be used to bounce the ball, yeah, they can choose to not do that. So you can you know you can have them all over balls. It's it's one of their great advantages. Both Noblas and Snotlings come with that inbuilt. I didn't right, notice so that the... the guy had manual fen. Jesus Christ, that is that is the worst thing you can possibly do in Blood Bowl. <laughs> no, it's not, Jim, because it's it's a psychological tool of warfare. <laughs> <laughs> so when you choose not to fend, it makes them think, well, why, why isn't why isn't he fended? Why does he want me to advance? <laughs> and then they never advance. <laughs> yes. So even when you don't fend, they don't advance. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know you've messed with their mind. And also I know it would have upset you if I'm playing you. So <laughs> that's why mine is set to manual. <laughs> It wouldn't really bother me. I just think, what an absolute dickhead. <laughs> um, yeah, this de this defense does look familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> oh no, it's not. He's just he just he's just got this guy back here. Yeah. It, it, again, I think he's. Whilst I often say some people put too much uh, focus on their setups, Jim, <laughs> this might be a time where I feel there's not perhaps been enough. Yeah. No, uh, ke Kerud, no drug. There's, there's literally no point because if someone's got frenzy, it just asks you. So like, it's always optional against frenzy, which means it yeah. should never ever be optional in Blood Bowl too. So at least this time we do seem to have a team that knows it's on offense and a team that recognizes defense. <laughs> That's a step forward. Yeah. Um, we've got a sort of lost Norseman. Now the Yeti's been found. So those of us that were worried about the Yeti, he has been found. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it seems that uh, Agnivore does not like being near the Yeti. Maybe it's a smell issue, perhaps it's something from his childhood, we don't know. Uh, but let's keep an eye on that, let's see if he does rejoin this game. Oh dear, oh Bornhead. I mean, you could say he's been left back in case of a thrown snotling, but he hasn't, has he? No, he's he hasn't, just, because you'd leave the tackle place. guy there. Well, <laughs> would you? <laughs> I mean, I would have fielded the tackle guy personally, so yeah, <laughs> what do I, I know? <laughs> I wouldn't have him in the hittable position at the front of my boat. Um, oh. But I perhaps place a value on Rackle against dodge ball carriers that this Norse coach does not. <laughs> However, we're not hitting the tackle piece with our blitz. No, going for the safety of the 3D, isn't it? Yeah, nice 3D on the guard. It's a fine target. And we remove it. So there we are. That's fine. Well, hey. Plus, I have a sneaking feeling we'll get hold of that tackle wrestle piece just about any time we want. To. <laughs> yeah, it does seem that way, doesn't it? Got a big old power on the line of scrimmage. Those Fend coming into play. Way. Doing its job, keeping that ogre one step further back than where it would have been. Outstanding. Just, I mean, that Norse can now stand up and walk away. Yeah, he sure can. Powerful. Surely we don't activate the final ogre. No, no, there's no way you can activate it. He just stands there defending an actual gate. <laughs> yes. Which looks like it's open, but isn't, is it, Jim? It isn't, no. <laughs> Unlike the thing that people call a gate, which is open, even though they call it something that closes gaps. <laughs> we, we definitely need a better word than gate. Yeah, literally any other word. <laughs> but I'm quite 
quite like hool. Yeah. It's not a gaping void, it's just a little hool. Yeah. yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, he's picked this guy up. It was it was a cunning ruse all along. <laughs> there he was, hidden behind the rest of the play. And now look at look at that surprise sprung, outflanking those noblars in a way that a person placed in the boat could just as easily have done. Yeah, it's like a gateway. It's like a gateway drug. It's like it gets you halfway to being like chunter. He's <laughs> just. He's, he's run the tackle piece away from all the noblars. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> to be fair, there is one noblar there. He's thinking, why, why me? There's two over the other side and they've got skills. Why, why do you hate me? Oh, man. Oi, oh, hey, both down. If you're going to blitz the... Oh, he's got um, jugs. He is. Well, hey. Yeah, he's got jugs. He might also That's take it, of course. He... Ooh. Now, I would now love for that hole I've just created to dodge my tackle piece through there and threaten the Noblars in the backfield, but... It's hard, though, isn't it? It's hard. It's hard to be. Or put it onto that Noblar, at least, that's behind the little hole I've created. Yes, yeah, definitely, ta definitely tag him with tackle, for sure, but... um. But it's already been used, and I mean, it, 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 that's still a, a nice thing for the Yeti to have done. Though again, it's taken him away from where everything else is, which keeps him safer. Yep. But it doesn't put the pressure on the Ogres, does it, Jim? No, and he's got a 4-plus to get back in the game, hasn't he? It's just brutal, really. It's absolutely brutal. You know how I sometimes hang a Slayer out the side of one of my teams? And people <laughs> always hit it. Do you think that's what he did with his Ogre there? Because mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, he's a rookie as well, wasn't he? So yeah, that was the perfect... That was the perfect player to draw that blitzer. Uh, he now does want to tag the Snotling, but instead of doing it with the tackle piece and moving the uh, sure hands piece, his best picker-upper of the ball, to do the assist before the blitz, he did it the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> so his best picker-upper of the ball is now marked by a, a nobler, and his tackle piece is now marking a downed, stunned ogre. <laughs> Although, to be fair, that does mean it's free next turn. So hopefully we'll see it go rowdily into the backfield and hassle these ball carriers. Yeah. Oh, wow, so the injury was a seven up to an eight and Thick Skull saved him. There you go. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Lovely. It doesn't matter, Table. <laughs> Literally doesn't matter. No, that's some nice detail which we could have cared about, but we just we didn't do it, Jim. No. I mean, it literally doesn't matter, does it? Like, it's something that you can notice and be like, ah. Like, right, now, the, uh, the same I did say that. On and the claw and everything, mighty blow, but it, it doesn't really matter, does it, where the claw was used? Like, the only thing that matters is he's there and he's there. Yeah, and is he's he there, is he not? Yeah. Now, we are KO that, uh, that we apo as the course of the first half has come roundly into this backfield threatening our ball carriers. Now, it doesn't have tackle, but it does have a lot of move. It is a blodge piece, which is very hard for the Ogres to control. So this turn is going to centre around what we do about that. Yes. And I Fend think... there again, really paying off for these Norse. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a 3D, hasn't it? You it, can put it, it, diamond tackle on him as well, which is nice. Definitely needs to be both of those things. Something in the way first. Lovely. Yep. Diving tackle in both as an assist and where you plan to push it to. Textbook. And now we do the blitz. And it's no power, of course. <laughs> of course it isn't. There's no Why doubles. Doing things on... well pay off. There's barely any skills on the orders, is there? Oh, there's one. There's, there's yeah. one double. There's a block. But we keep it on the diving tackle. That's awesome. Good news. We we'll love that. Good coaching. It's kind of crazy that the Norse were the uh, disadvantage in this game, weren't they? With Boomer and the Babe. Yep. When you think this Ogre team has just hardly got any skills at all, really, has it? I think just do get fat in this rule set, though. Of course, next rule set, the Noblar's coming in completely free as long as they stay without skills in terms of team value. really solves that problem. 
Yeah, yeah, it'll be a lot better. Figures are a lot leaner. And that just that little boost of perhaps another 200 TV every game that you can throw into inducements or meaning a slightly less challenging matchup really does tip them into something slightly more competitive and a bit less shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say they're going to dominate leagues, but they do a lot better. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a lovely uh, three die now on this again, Fendmeister of a Norseman. <laughs> now, the only problem we've got is that we're threatenable, though not reachable, by that Norseman straight ahead of our ball carrier. Yeah. And, of course, our Yeti is surrounded by Norsemen. <laughs> yes. Excellent. This and we do we didn't fail the one in thirty six away from the Shorehands guy, Jim. I'm chopped. <laughs> we did use... actually roll a one. Yeah, so if we did on a tackle piece, you know, <laughs> that would have been a problem. But luckily we weren't on a tackle piece, so we were able to just re roll it and roll a three. Mm. And it was fine. It's not a lot like parenting my children. You can be right as much as you want. If no one bloody listens, what's the point? <laughs> there we have full on abandoned our uh, our ogre that was our distraction for the yeti. Yes. The upside of that is the yeti and a gang of four Norse are miles away from anywhere they need to be. Yeah. They're not providing any threat to the ball carrier. Uh, they're not in the backfield, and they're not dealing with the three ogres that are securing a spot on the line of scrimmage for the ball to advance to. So, good job, Nos. Yeah, it makes you wonder if he's going to try and... Uh, well, he's obviously not. I was going to wonder if he's going to try no. and just blitz with a Yeti to... to yeah, uh, blitz the Yeti uh, bucket back into relevance uh, whilst dropping it back central behind the line of scrimmage. Now, you might have thought that was a good idea, Jim, and so might I, but he didn't. <laughs> he wants to hit a uh, Nobler, and I mean, we all want to hit Noblars. Gets him down. Pile on or not? I think he hasn't I mean, piled on. He did pile I like on. hitting noblars like I like hitting people that say, I, I think I was born vegan. Um, but <laughs> there's times you just need to think about other priorities. <laughs> Oh, Pylon is safe for Augus, yes, Dirtle, apparently so. <laughs> Why pile on the AV6 stunt is? Yeah, that's never likely to do you well, particularly when you've carried Mighty Blow through onto the arm injury roll. <laughs> he made that hit before he moved someone through his diagonal, which is a bit risky, right? Because if that was just pushers, he would have, uh, he would have stopped this diagonal. And I think this diagonal was a nice place to run run through this thrower. But what do I know? No. Uh, well, I, maybe technically, Rick. <laughs> Rick, the first thing you eat is your mother's milk. I'm pretty sure that doesn't pass vegan standards. <laughs> I don't well, know. Maybe what it does. Now, it's not from an animal. It's a human. Uh, perhaps humans are. Perhaps vegans are fine with cannibalism. I've not specifically asked. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, but like, obviously, once once we're once we're kids, we're uh, I mean, we're omnivores, aren't we? Yes, and you know, humans that are descended from animals that were known to be omnivorous. Don't, don't get me wrong. Whilst I'm taking the piss, I absolutely support everyone's right to eat less bacon if they wish. It leaves more bacon for me. It's a good ethical choice. It's right for the planet. I just like bacon too much. I'm not joining you. You can't make me. <laughs> but, you know, big up you. Well done. <laughs> Thanks for leaving me more bacon. Everyone's a winner. Wait. Oh, wow. The, the Yeti roars on the ground. And it is, Cheeky Jimmy. It is. It's stupid on the ground. Yeah, I had bacon today, actually. It was amazing. There you go. So this dodge is always going to be a thorn in his side. Thank you, Pedermill. I'm very comfortable talking about Blood Bowl. I'm always comfortable doing so with my good friend, Jimmy, who is fantastic at it. Oh, thank you very much, PC. What a lovely fella.
Oh, I don't like the brown sauce, but yeah, I like a good bacon sandwich. I know, like some people have just... I think it's, you know, if you're raised in a certain way by terrible parents, maybe brown sauce or ketchup is something you feel you have to do to bacon. We, we can't help them, Jim. <laughs> um... Too tall brown, right. yes. For for not for Norse, yes, because you've just you've got to take the guard where you can, right? The, you, this guy hasn't even got uh, hasn't even yeah, got absolutely. Ulf Werners, but um, you know, you you Ulf Werners want guard because they've got to, and then you your berserkers pretty pretty much just got to take guard as well. Your berserkers, if you don't have ults particularly, your berserkers are the only people that get uh, guard on normal, so they have to take it. Runners, if they do get a double, probably have to take it too. Uh, and particularly if they've already got Mighty Blow, because you just need as much of it as you can get in a team that is, is starved for access to those skills. Yeah. Um, and if it means that they're not doing... I mean, I've, I've never been a lover of, oh, this is my piece that does this one thing I've decided it's going to do for my team. Really? Well, what happens when I kill it? How's your team doing that then? <laughs> so actually, sometimes you need to build a team that has a variety of options, even within a single piece, that on offense can be offensive, on defense can suddenly be you know, doing a slightly different role. Three blitzers, not one. Obviously, there'll be a primary blitzer on most squads. When people say, oh, this is my blitzer, and I say, okay, when it's dead, what's blitzing? And they look confused. Well, they're, they're, they're terrible at football. <laughs> I think this this move got Nobla had to be two two squares above because at the moment he's got an yeah. easy, easy dodge in, hasn't he? You've it is a very easy dodge in. It's a, yeah, it's a three plus in, which I would be taking. Um, the Norse... Haven't seemed to want to take advantage of Noblar gates yet, have they? So no. we'll see if that's something they try to do. Um, I mean, I can just as easily see him two dying this guard ogre to move it out of the way and then just walking it. Yeah. You've only got to tag the one that isn't guard, uh, and that's a, a two die uphill. Yep. Which yep. wanting just to push against no block is pretty decent. Yep. The problem is then noise the guard, isn't it? Because. Uh... They've both got guard, both ogres, so you're not getting 3D on the ball there. Whereas if you make your 3 plus dodge in, you're getting 3D. So Yes. Yeah. It is a bit... Uh, and also, this guy's your sure hands guy. So he could be a, a good recovery, potentially, if things go crazy. <laughs> you know, if the scatters well, are kind of crazy. He hasn't seemed to want to use the pieces for what they seem good to do <laughs> so far, Jim. So I'm just not... I'm not really set my heart on expecting that. Now, that said, look, let's talk some, some upsides here. The Norse guy has dropped his Rackle piece back, which is great. Um, that's where that probably needs to be, as it isn't going to do anything positive in his other plans for it. Then keeping it as a, a sweeper is, is a great thing to do with that. Uh, he has got back in front of arresting this move forward, so it was the right way that he moved his team last turn. And he is positioned reasonably well, as we've said, in at least two ways to take advantage of a pretty poor turn from the Ogres. Both in terms of the dice they rolled and, and enough Ogres not going where they wanted. But also, I didn't love the plan, as you said, Jim. It's just left too many ways in to, to this ball. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that good point by Gdanik. It could be the old, I hope my opponent doesn't know how Titchy tackle zones work gambit and, and yeah that it's surprising uh, how few people so far good day we, we there was evidence to say that that is the case <laughs> it is surprising um, i think that definitely co has contributed to my uh, to my win rate with ogres yeah just people just literally not knowing ah, moving the tackle even further back it isn't the most obvious dynamic is it because if you tell people they don't have tackle zones, that's not true. They do. Uh, but they just work very, very differently to normal tackle zones. Yeah. Well, looks like he does know. And he gets the 3D, gets the power. He does. That's backwards here, doesn't it? Yeah, I wonder if just taking the board down was better so that... Uh... You know, you, you so wouldn't he can't control the stuff. square, yeah, yeah. No But then following is kind of okay, isn't it? Even though you're getting bit yeah. by an ogre, but at least you're at least you're occupying them. Well, that was Lob removal, a lovely scatter for the Norse. So every side of the Norse actually upping their game in this uh, this turn, which is nice. Yeah, it's looking it's looking pretty rough for the ogres. I mean, this was this is always the thing with ogres, isn't it? There. Yeah, there are dead still ogres. 
Yeah, that's why I think he probably should have tried to roll the dice, you know, late in this first half to get that yeah. defensive touchdown. And as you've said, a lot of TV without enough block, and it's block that really gets the work done on big ogre teams. Yeah. Stand firm and guard is great, but block slaughters teams. <laughs> Ooh. However, all is not lost. There is a chance to respond to this. Oof. The uphill, right at the death. Okay, choosing the both down, which is the right thing. Yep, stand straight back up, locking that guard in place where it's doing so much work. Yep, beautiful. That's nice. I'm trying to see, is there any way we can get a Noblar in between these two ogres? And he's already done it. <laughs> and then that hit. Would have been able to leverage an ogre near a get a tackle zone on the ball. Yeah, I, mean, I think he'll just, he's just uh, going to hope to power him, isn't he? He's just going to try and smash them to pieces, isn't he? Which is a, a very ogre way of solving this problem. <laughs> yeah. And you don't take ogres for your finesse and needlework, do you? You're there to smash stuff to pieces. Yeah. <laughs> he's spawned at it again. These two. <laughs> Three turns of them both just lying on the floor. <laughs> right. There are um, there are two lovers, aren't there, in Pompeii, whose uh, ashes are in whose skeletons are entwined, <laughs> preserved in the ashes of that once great city by the volcano that erupted, and those two are reminding me of that. <laughs> Linked as they are in their utter ubiquitous uselessness to this game. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, bonehead. As irrelevant and marginalised as Theresa May. <laughs> yeah, that's not... Okay, so now we are using Noblar tackle zones because of their sidestep ability to make the ball unpickable. I like that. Yeah. Not sure I'd have picked it up this turn. I don't think it needs to be. We can try and kill some more Norse and then take the ball. Yes. Yeah, I like that. You've got stand firm and two sidesteppers. It's pretty safe. Yeah. But of course, there is a guy who can... Who can chin easily I don't know chin. why we wanted them both on the edge I quite liked being yeah one step further back because if I, he comes to me with the berserker I want to step onto the edge and then away from it leaving him on the edge yeah do you see what I mean yeah I see what you mean but I think the scary thing I suppose thing you can still the, do that can't you you could the scare, The scary thing for them now I think is uh, is shunting this lineman on the ball isn't it get a scab yes yeah, yeah, that's certainly as Norse, that's what I'd be looking to try and do. Um, yeah, I think that's a really nice plan. Because anywhere it scatters to is better, and it also is going to give you a piece that instead of having to deal with two ogres on it, can try to hit one of the Noblars. Yeah. All the way up, that's a good plan. And you've got loads of pieces you can free up by the block piece that probably shouldn't have activated. Yeah, man. Oh, the Yeti's up! Way! <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, and beautifully, the animation I saw just led up to the Yeti was a big yawn. Yeah, was it a nice nap, love, was it? <laughs> well, welcome back to the game. We've missed you. Do you think he knows that Norseman in the far distance is still there? Oof. And he might not know. Gets the 1D, pal. Gets the 1D, but gets the push to the space we're talking about. That's some nice coaching. Surely doesn't pile. Although the rule so far is he does on AV nines. <laughs> hey. Plus, also gets him out of the hit range of those two ogres. You can see him going onto the ground for that reason alone, uh, but chooses not to. Now, if I was him, I would put this berserker with the tackle zone, but not touching the ogre, uh, touching the knob that's plus move, and take a two die on that. Mm. He's still got his blitz though, hasn't he? So he could. Or, or did he blitz with a? Did he blitz with a yeti? Or did he? Oh no, he has got his blitz. Yes, you're right. So he can blitz the top one instead. Yeah. Doesn't do so. Have we missed the blitz? It's not showing on my screen, certainly. No, he, he, maybe he blitzed with the the yeti. I don't know. No, it was a four plus, so he didn't blitz with a yeti. Ooh. So he could have just blitzed with that with that. Berserker, if you wanted. This is what's making Snotling so powerful in the 2020 rules. It's that inbuilt sidestep. 
their ability to hug the edges, to provide assists, it's safety from anywhere. And any hit that fails, they get to choose where they go, of course, which is devastating. Mm. Add to that numbers and a couple of big hitty things, and suddenly Snotling's very dangerous opponents. Yeah. Well, oh, you to remember the tackle that moves him even further away from the action. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> he puts, <laughs> puts the damning tackle gets the power. I guess that makes sense, Blitz with him. And yeah, him. that's that's not a bad thing to Blitz. It's um, it, it does, you know, if it worked, which it does, though with a two die it wasn't that likely to, but it did. Uh, it means he can now reposition to somewhere where it's more valid and more useful, but I don't know. Holding the diving tackle there isn't terrible either. Yeah. I hope the ogre gets up and chases the yeti uh, next turn. <laughs> you go, will you send us a letter from your <laughs> I mean, I can see herds of buffalo roaming between where this ball is and where that rackle piece has ended up. And I I suppose he's worried about the knoblar throw, isn't he? That's yes. the only reason it's that far back. Yes. Yes. And Just he, to cover he a knoblar throw that then guy. stalls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. And he wants to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, he is so far out of range of all of the ogres that he Ooh, has to be. He stood up, that guy. I, I quite liked, uh, you know, potentially surfing here, if he makes this yeah, first. He yeah, goes. chaining him onto the ball and then surfing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I liked that a lot. Ah, oh, but he's going he's gonna to clear him with a power. Okay, that, that, that was also a consideration. But, the, but fa surfing is pretty good, isn't it? Even It is, even yeah. As ogres. Yes, of course, you didn't need to bounce the ball, did you? You could have gone up, well up ahead of the ball and then surfed slightly back right to your southeast corner to get the surf. Yes, yes. Read up one of your noblars, put a ogre tackle zone on the ball. It's it's just all good, except it does move your ogre a little nearer the edge. Yes, the ogre's up and he's chased the yeti. <laughs> hey, I'm back! <laughs> well, we slept together, you slept forever. <laughs> and now you're chasing off after hair little noblars. <laughs> Like what we had was not even special to you. <laughs> it's a love story for our times. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> now, the stand firm in that square just ahead of the ball is much, much nicer. I like that a lot. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Are we gonna? Are we gonna? I pick the ball up, Jim. Do you think? I don't think we are. I think we're just sticking four tackle zones on it this turn. Then next turn five, and the one after six. <laughs> <laughs> hope for, hope for us, an August scatter catch. Hey, that's 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 the that's what he wants. Oh, and again we activate an ogre that maybe we shouldn't have, but that no, 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 was fine. That's not doing anything there, is it? We had no, time to go no, that one. Yeah, I think I think you've got to you've got to activate there. But it's interesting, isn't it? It's always interesting as to as to how valuable it being somewhere else is. It's, it's, yeah, no, that one. Is of no value there, so it was all of its value was in trying to move. So I was completely wrong, as I very often am. It's the accent that I get away with it. Because people <laughs> think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, the nose, the nose armor is not breaking, is it? Pretty if much. I said hool, or then people would doubt me. You see, that's true. <laughs> No, the Norse armor really hasn't broken, particularly this half. Um, first half we did see some Norse go, but this half it's uh, it's stayed a lot better. But look at that power pack of ogres in right around that ball now. Oh yeah, very exciting. God. I guess there's a series of uphills that could happen, see what happens, chains, all sorts of things, but it's it's pretty messy, isn't it? I don't I don't envy uh, this Norse <laughs> take a, a ball here. Like, this is pretty rough, isn't it? Like, it's not really yeah. rough, obviously, because it's the August drive, but, like, and they've only got three turns left, so you're still looking well, pretty mean, good. But it's, there's no obvious, like, solution, is there? No. 
Well, I mean, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> the strength of two dauntless. <laughs> if it hits, the guard ogre can push it onto the ball. And then there's two things next to the ball, which should probably mean it bounces out if it heads that way. Or it heads back into the pack. I would play, I would be looking at that two die uphill and play bingo and dominoes with the ball. You can you can you can stand up just stand up the berserker, couldn't you? And then you've got a you've got a four plus at a two D then. Yeah. Which isn't terrible. It's not shocking. And if it's two reds just needing a push, that's not shocking either. Uh, and then your responsive Norse is at the back of that little pack and not tagged by anything. Yep. Um, the Rackle piece, if it was only four squares nearer, could give an assist <laughs> to the Yeti. <laughs> I mean, there are you know, there's some things that could get done, but I think it starts with that that strength two dauntless for me. <laughs> but my money, Jim. But yes, you're right. Stand up, Berserker first. After saying that sentence, uh, <laughs> it starts with a strength two dauntless, and, it, and it's a Norse team. Something's gone pretty wrong, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> strength two dauntless. But it's you know, come on, that'll work. Yeah, it might. Or at least it won't not work for at least two moves. And it gives you something to try. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some quite good outcomes for that. This is genuinely not the worst plan in the world, but he's not doing it. Hey. No, he's moving his one responsive piece and then he's standing up his one on the edge. <laughs> oh, jeez, I'm wet. <laughs> and then he's got to do either a four plus dodge or accept he's getting surfed. Well, he's got the he's got the jump up, and then like, he's going to just block this ogre and power him. Nope, he's pushed him. Oh. He's got stand firm. Whoops. Yeah. Whoopsie. <laughs> and now he might be forced into doing the thing that was my plan. He is. He is. He's got the dawn. He's doing it at the end of the turn instead of the brilliant start. <laughs> brilliant. The one thing that might have moved the ball and made this all good for him, and he does it at the end. <laughs> oh, well, you know. It's a good hit to take. Well done. Yeah. Now we're having a little look at the Yeti. Is he going to risk that? It's one of those beautiful situations where it's uh, exactly two dice that help him and two dice that harm him and two dice that just mean we see more dice. He's going to double GFI. Forget the safety. Hey! He's not. That, that Norse isn't coming anywhere forward. <laughs> it is! It probably is! <laughs> I previously had assumed that Norse was named after his father. We would not see it in action. Uh, but no, apparently just hitting the worst ogre on the field is worth sacrificing your safety. Oh, he's killed him! Boom. Good well, God, it was, Jim. What do I know? It's totally worth it. <laughs> you might have thought that irrelevant ogre. Holding the less relevant Yeti over to one side was not worth sacrificing your way of stopping Noblas winning the game. But it turns out it was. Oh, I hated that stand-up. I hated that stand-up. I didn't love it either, but... Because I, I, yeah, I want to see if this hit works first. Yeah. And then, then this guy might have to do a blitz or whatever, or he might have to throw a Noblar or whatever. There was, there was things that might have happened. So if this was turn nine, I'd have thought what the ogres are going for here I didn't hate, but it's it's not, is it? It's turn fourteen. Turn fourteen, yeah, it's getting it's getting Which, crunch time. Yeah, it is getting a little tricky. Oof, another ball now. And also we're holding our entire back door with a bunch of knoblars. Yeah. I've always used first half and I turned two in your snuff. Just way too many easy jokes down. I'm not going to do any of them. I'm going to resist because I'm a big grown up. <laughs> and oh man, Fatal Attraction was pretty great from Cheeky Jimmy. <laughs> what an end to the what an end to the Yeti. What an end to their love affair. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes let your lover go, or they will kill you. That's that's what I'm taking from that one. Oh wow, we've advanced the snotling. Worth now, it. I don't hate picking up with this plus move and just tatoing up the side. Yeah. But probably wait and do it next turn. The problem is waiting, of course, this Berserker can come in the rear. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
frenzied um, Norseman in your ear is... Do your, do your own jokes, really. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Juliet with a twist, absolutely doodle. <laughs> it was the love that was never meant to be between one Yeti and an ogre. <laughs> and it ended as all loves do. It was so good though, they were, they were on the floor for like four turns together. <laughs> yeah, he runs away, Orca chases him, Orca gets killed. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it was really good. And yet the Yeti will take, I would imagine, no further part in this drive. <laughs> yeah. And still not be relevant to what ends up happening in this game. <laughs> but, you know, it had its moment. <laughs> Definitely a better love story than Twilight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. <laughs> yeah, that's true, the, the Norseman. Uh, the Norseman, with, fire off there. the Norseman with a big tackle came to... <laughs> Honestly, we had something beautiful and you had to make it horrible. <laughs> oh, God, it is. Yeah, it's two squares away. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. He pushed him twice. Holy shit. It is. He is. Know, it, might be, it might be that they're lying certainly very near where their <laughs> long entanglement took place. <laughs> Whether the Yeti is exactly lying on the. Uh, <laughs> On the wet spot or not, I I could I'd have to rewind. <laughs> oh, but if Willie stands up, it's furs or sticky. We will know. <laughs> oh man, so good. Oh, oh whoops! There goes another one. Oh god, well it's not looking like kicks right now, is it? The ogres are looking no. No. looking in a and very bad way. I I would fear they're not likely to win the next game, Jim. <laughs> 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 um, if they get there they'd have four ogres, plus they'd still be ogres. So Yeah. <laughs> I mean really their chalice is all about winning a game. They can still win this game. But I think the plan has to involve getting this ball to the touchdown line in the next three turns. For the next two. <laughs> well, yes. Sorry, yes, two. So pretty much got to pick and up. And the Norse have got to realise that. Six, yeah. You got to hand off the yeah. move six, then lob him with the ogre, and then move him. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. You you can't afford him to move before the ball is in his hands, really, which means he can't pick up. Oh. Yeah, he's straight back up. Well, he's energised now. It's no longer keeping him there. <laughs> he, he wants another lover. There's more There's in the him. Skull. There's the skull, and that's removed the tackle zone from the ball. Oh, baby. And it means he can easily remove uh, the tackle zone That's all beautiful. The yeah. Wow. This gives us pretty much what we need. Wow. It's that saucy little handoff to the plus move. Um, it's not me. I don't see how we move that. Zerker away. I suppose we can, can't we? Yeah, we can blitz, blitz it off with the with the uh, juggernaut. The cunningly positioned <laughs> boneheaded. Okay. Is it the right? It's the right first hit. Yep. Then doing its evil work. Oh. But it's the right first hit. Too powerful. Now we need to see this blitz. This three die blitz on the Zerker. Just needs to move it. <gasps> Genius play by Anraka, eating the one on the pointless activation. Brilliant, brilliant. Excellent. Well done. Well <laughs> done. That's some class ogre play. <laughs> knew there was a one in the stack decided he'd use it on the ogre that was irrelevant to how he wins this game <laughs> genius really come on 3D you can do it I believe in you it's the most obvious hit on this field right now looks like he's Here not we doing go. it he's not doing it <laughs> uh, okay well, you can do it with the Nobler. Yeah, the I guess Nobler is strength normal. one. That makes it a two die, but it's still very, very doable. Yeah, maybe, maybe he activated so that if it failed, he could still do a one D blitz to shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Has to be the blitz though, with the one that's standing beside the ball. Can't can't really risk the one die here. Yeah, yeah, he's got a blitz. No, no, it was completely the wrong move. Oh. That was just awful. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was the wrong move, and it failed, which is a shame. And now we have see overtime, or possibly. I mean, it's is it? No, no, it's not possible. It's going to be overtime. Yeah. And the ogres are pretty much destroyed. Yeah, pretty much, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, there, the there, there's, the, there's the one turn touchdown. If they get the ball, they might be able to uh, turn 17, get the win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's probably their best shot now, isn't it? I'd have thought. Yeah. Keep that one reroll back at least. Oh, do we bounce this ball? I suspect we probably Glorious. should. No, I won't give in. Well, you couldn't guarantee it anyway. Until either, I'm could he, victorious. So I well just take the, and I will defend. Yeah. Take the knockdown. I will defend. No. Well, you can. Jim Sad. Jim Sad. Thank you very much, Tom Schnitz. Le Bread Mask. Ho, ho, ho. 27 glorious months. Oh, yeah. The Yeti could uh, move up, look, to relevancy. It could. And why not? Why not, indeed? Outrageous. He could get a scoring threat, couldn't he? He could get a cheeky... The, the tackler could completely abandon his defensive duties, go from two squares from his own end zone to being the scoring threat. That would be something. <laughs> oh, whisper it quietly. But yeah, the Norse have definitely got the best shot of winning this game in regular time now. Um, yeah. You've got to advance a scoring threat. And yes, I think the Rackle piece is what I would use as nope. God knows he hasn't done anything else. <laughs> nope. All game. Despite being his only tackle. <laughs> he takes the team heavy with dodge. <laughs> I'm not cross, Jim. I'm just disappointed. I'm, I'm sad more than anything, really. Yeah. Oh, dear. It's been a lot of fun anyway, thanks for thanks for joining us. <laughs> just feel like he's you know, it's like asking Thierry Henry to play a right back or something. It's just it's... <laughs> Gareth Bale. <laughs> yeah. That's restarted, wasn't it? Asking him to play football instead of golf, it's just not right. <laughs> okay, well the ball's in an even harder position for the slot needs to get to, so they won't. So we are definitely seeing overtime. It's all on where that coin lands. Ogre time. Tension. Oh, I like what you did there. <laughs> yep. Wait, was that the blitz? Oh, I guess he comes in there and blitzes okay. I was going to say, oh, why didn't he just blitz that? <laughs> but I guess this, no, this one's got juggernaut. Surf, this one's got it? juggernaut, so it was better, wasn't it, probably? Yep. But still just stand this guy up first to make it three dice, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it was still yeah. better to stand him up and then 3D with him. Yeah, so. 100%. I mean, I would still say I think on balance the Ogres have played better, but the Norse have certainly picked up, played a lot better in the second half. Yeah. Um, Ogre players stayed a little variable, some great turns, some a bit more iffy ones. Um, and we are where we are because the Norse are fundamentally better at Blood Bowl. Yes. And although that Yeti did nothing of any value to what happened in this half, um, <laughs> and it killed an ogre, may well be decisive in terms of the game state. Yeah, he's made two cars, hasn't he, the uh, Yeti, overall? He has, yeah. One stuck, one was up odd. But yeah, that, that was for sure a play, wasn't it? Stand up this, stand up this guy. And, and then go for yes, the and then the same blitz, but three die with Juggernaut to surf that ball carrying. Oh, God. Evil, evil runner. Poor little Knobla dies. Oh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's yet more attrition on a team that doesn't have enough already, isn't it? It's. I mean, I'm not sure he's going to lose the game through lack of Knoblas. He's going to lose the game through lack of a team. Yes. But he's potentially got nine. He's potentially got nine. And if he wins the toss. Yeah. 
He's yeah, got as I said, it, it's all about that throw, turn. isn't it? It's got yeah. to be that one or two turns and throwing a, a knob like that. That's, that's the answer here. Yeah. We've still got two re-rolls, so... But the horse don't have no re-rolls. No, the horse could still just ball things up randomly, couldn't they, somehow? It's, it's still quite interesting. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, but it's it's you know quite interesting in the way that Tori Amos is an actress, isn't it? It's you know it's kind of right on the edge there. <laughs> I knew you knew that, Sato, but I, I I couldn't ask you the other night. Uh, Artemis was asking what it was, and uh, I thought if anyone knows what commands, it's Sato. But... Yeah, I don't know any of them. I always have to ask people to do them for me because I just can't remember any of them. <laughs> Here we go, overtime. 50 50 for the Augers to have a chance, basically. I'm thrilled, Jim. I'm on the edge of my seat. Ooh, both, both kills stay out, only seven players. Yeah, it's not what you wanted, is it? But if they win the toss, they've got half a chance. But they didn't. Oh. They are officially up shit creek. <laughs> yeah, they're completely screwed. Um, if they get a blitz, keep your ogre back to throw it. That's quite nice. Make sure you keep a snotling somewhere to be thrown from. So those two up on the wings are in great positions to be reached and thrown. Uh, you want to keep one central of your three snotlings, which he is doing, and then put three big boys up on the line, which he is doing. It's about as good as you can hope for as a setup. Yep. I just worked it out manually, Satter. I just worked out the one. Art wanted to know the one reroll difference, so I just worked it out manually and then uh, and then ping Bezel the next day, I think, to. Uh, you know, because I thought he should. He, I thought he'd want his help to be up to date. Now, on the plus side for you ogre fanciers out there, the Norse also didn't get their KO back, so that's good news. Um. They only have seven, uh, nine pieces, so they only outnumber us by two. Um, and they've still got the same coach they've had all game. So, <laughs> you know, there are some advantages. <laughs> Although, as I said, he did actually coach the second half much better. <laughs> Apart from the rackle piece weirdly wandering about. Yeah. Hello, there's a lot, like of, a lot of good things, too. Yeah, yeah, and there's definitely a chance still. Like, obviously, very, very, yeah. very small chance for the Ogres, but there's there's kind of a chance despite losing. We need if we're not going to see a ten, we need to see or a perfect defence. Obviously, both of those would really help. If we're not seeing that, we need to see all three Ogres probably survive that first turn, turn seventeen, yeah. and then reasonably quickly some attrition start to happen back uh, and get at least one or two of these Norse off the field. Yeah, I wonder if it was worth having a. Uh... Having this ogre like right behind the LOS and then the Noblar right behind him just in case of a blitz throw, you know? Yeah. That could have been could have been yeah. something. It's one of the ways you can win the game then, isn't it? Well I mean the blitz throw, as I said, what you do is you advance that ogre to one of the stop ah, yes, yeah, Noblars that's on the wings and you throw from there. Yeah, true, yeah. I'm, I'm um, stupid. So you you're still set to sort of take advantage of that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm done. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I'm a big dummy, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. so those, those, those not are perfect. Yeah. Of course, we can also see the cost of uh, not really giving a damn what happened to our sure hands piece. Because <laughs> it is a one in three that we don't manage to pick the ball up. Oh, we'll cheering fans, carry though. We've got. Cheering fans, the look of dogs. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Well, not only cheering fans, but cheering fans when he didn't have the fame. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's brutal, isn't it? So three against one, no fame either side, but uh, yeah. Brutal. Straight 50% gives him that reroll. Well, I think that's very, very bleak news. <laughs> yeah. There's a pom nobler. Yeah. That's one less nobler you've got to presume. <laughs> off it's <laughs> all that matters he does go for the pickup I thought I thought he was gonna go for the yeti hit but 
he managed he managed to control himself and pick up the ball first. Fortunately, it did not soak up that re-roll. Yep. So now we're in 9v6. Yep. Really to tank this Yeti hit. He did not tank it. <laughs> no, that's sort of the opposite of what I said he needed to do, isn't it, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, sort of the exact opposite, yeah. Sort of the exact opposite, yeah, in many ways. <laughs> yeti. Is Yeti really putting the work in this game? That's uh, that's three very important casualties there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Why didn't you stand firm? Interesting. I don't think he feels he can take even a one die at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, one can die, certainly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and who's to blame him? Um, yeah. He's put himself in a lovely position, of course, where he can uh, blitz the strength two piece, uh, which he can put an assist in and make it a three die. And if it's a push, he can push it onto the other ogre and get another three die on it. Yeah. So. Uh, that's what I'd be doing. Uh, however, it doesn't look like he's doing that. I'd be lobbing this Noblar and hoping it hits the runner and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd that, be doing. That's not going to happen either. Though. <laughs> yeah, the Norsing took a while to kick in, but now, my God, my God, is it become a Norsing. Well, and I nearly corrected you at the start when you said, and of course they've got claw pop. And I said, I was going to say, yes, but only one. <laughs> um, but it's been plenty, isn't it? Yeah, all you need is one. Like, it's, uh, it's the only guy who can reliably hit the uh, ogres, isn't it? And, you, you know, you're going to need to hit one turn, so it's all pretty brutal. All you need is claw. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> right, so this turn, as offensive forces, we have an ogre and two noblars. <laughs> I doubt even this few Norse are that intimidated. No. You you wouldn't think so. I guess you've got to go for the one that's near the near the ogre just so that because it might do something. But he's probably just going to blitz an ogre with a yeti, I imagine. <laughs> Why you say imagine? Are you prepared to put money on that? Because I definitely am. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> I'm not I gonna also think it. it's going to be the worst of the three overs. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, might, I, could, I could be wrong there. It might be the Stanford one. Um, but it's probably going to be the worst of the three. Uh, that's what I want to say as well. No, no, no. A sensible non-tackle non blitz. Look, you're tackling, but just in the same range, Jim. Yeah, it's but right, this... It's right there. But this means you've got the tackle as the Six safety. dice, yeah. It's, it's also, yeah, absolutely. And, and six, six dice, dice with block. frenzy. It's fine. It's good. Yeah, yeah. six dice with block. That probably makes frenzy better. Probably does, yeah. I, th I think probably, yeah, with it being three dice with block. Let's have a look. Let's samba this. This is the most exciting moment of the match. <laughs> um... Three dice, needing two results is, ah, well you can't tell, right, because it's, uh, I guess you just do it with a reroll, even though it's not strictly true. Is that strictly true? No, because you could just double score, so you can't actually work it out, can you, accurately, but it's about 91%. You should complain, honestly, what a terrible oversight in Sam. <laughs> Yeah, about 91% versus 87.5%. Um, so, yeah, looks like the three dice without tackle is better, with as long as you've got Frenzy. It's not quite right, but because you could dub skull, but, well, trip skull. Yeah, and, again, and there's things like, you know, is there a GFI involved? There's all sorts of other little factors that people never you know, look in when they're comparing apples and oranges. Uh, but I accept the raw, you know, three of uh, block on frenzy for six dice is probably better than 
three dice with rest with tackle, but yeah. you're overlooking that he's rackle. Now, if we just wanted it down, if he was a ball carrier, for example, the rackle would definitely be better. Yes. So what it has left is three ogres that can get in front of this drive. Oof. Um, so I'm not entirely sure for once I would have snot been blitzed. I'd have quite liked the idea of just reducing three ogres to two ogres that could get in front of my drive. Yep. And just get this dealt with as quickly as possible. Well, if um, I was going to blitz a snotling, it would have been the one next to the auger, just so that he you yeah. had to stop him throwing it, basically. Yeah, exactly. Also true. Um, wow, so that's... I think we have thinned the numbers by one. Surely now we just take one more step to the right with the blitzing piece and leave the other two ogres be and withdraw the snotlings to possesses where they're slightly covered. Yeah. That's basically it. Yep, I think that's that's all good. Now, of course, the the break tackle jugs is exposed, so now this is probably worth. Yes, definitely the, uh... have to be trying to nail that now. It's the most worrying piece still on the field. It's the only piece that can get into any kind of screen and hit the ball carrier, isn't it? Yeah. And plus, it's it's down the side that you want to be advancing down, where most of your forces are heading. Yeah. However, that's. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, why use two things when one would have done just as well? But okay, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe he's going to uh, hit with the uh, Berserker. He's, he's been enjoying pomming augers with that Berserker. He, he has, and I, I just horrifically think you might be right, but it's surely, surely not. Good. So the troll is going for it. I mean, yes, Frenzy Finney is no, but he only needed the one, didn't he? He only, he only needed this one. Un unless he was going to blitz from this square for no reason. But, like, you could you could argue that he wanted to blitz from this square and then push him down and down, right? But he just didn't even push from that square. So the fact he didn't hit from this square, he definitely just needed the guy at the back. I like that. I like the hit there, though. Yeah, for sure. Break tackle and, and jump. I think it was the right hit. I, I, he was always going to pile on. I didn't love the pile on. Oh, you've got a pile on there. I th do you though? Yeah. Well, I know you do, but <laughs> are I you mean, a man or a mouse? <laughs> you could even say that doing it like that and then not even stunning it and then not putting a proper cage around this ball so he can just stand up and break tackle straight in onto the ball. Nah, he's got, he's got another guy, look. Just have a wall. Meat um, wall. Is, is terrible, but presumably he's putting this right in. He is. Okay, I'm, I'm less horrified by it then. <laughs> Pal on. Oh, yeah. If I learned anything from Rick Reckless's Chalice Run, it's always pile on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there were things that could be learned from Rick Reckless's chalice run. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always pile on. It's a jungle out there, and you're either piling or you're getting piled. The wisest man on Fumble Water. <laughs> well, I think I would have blitzed the rack the rackle piece, but then I would see it as a threat, which it just isn't. <laughs> yeah, it isn't. It just genuinely isn't. So I'm kind of fine that he didn't. That's, that's fine with me. Um, Unless it's been a long con for this game. <laughs> You can get surf now, though, can't you? This was a bit. That's, yeah. This was very dangerous. Yeah, that, there, there's not a lot here that I love. But then once the first ogre bone headed, and you know we're in such a tough position now with three ogres. Yeah, yeah. And this, two this... noblars that it's already hard to say what would have been better, but I'm not sure this isn't the answer. 
No, yeah, I, I think do think hitting the rackle piece and trying to get some things in front of the drive briefly and try and make some kind of stand there was the answer, but they'll just swap to the middle. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, well. Um... <laughs> wow. Thank you very much for participating in this uh, season's chalice. We'd love to see you back next time. Uh, please don't bring Ocus. Yeah. <laughs> Next game is going to be very tough. <laughs> it, it certainly is. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, Bertha and uh, Grack and Crumbleberry, or oh, no, what's the equivalent? You get a Brick Fav, don't you? Grotty yeah. still. Yeah, Brick Fav and Grot. Never made any sense to me, that, uh, that star player, but there you go. Wasn't he... Wasn't that a name similar to one of those Americans that throws balls at people that take too many steroids? Yes, but like, why is he an ogre? <laughs> why does he have grey? I it's don't like, know, Jim. It's just why are they allowing people to run with chainsaws on a football field? That seems odd to me. <laughs> yeah, but... I like, you know, I like that they do. Make him a human quarterback if you want to have a player named after Brett Favre. Like, it's just so weird that it's like... I, uh, see, what, what, we've stopped... I mean, it, it'll be fine, but it's, it'll be fine, it's not, it'll right. be fine. 5 plus 4 plus, let's go. Yeah, I know, 5 plus 4 plus. At the very least, might na nag him on the edge, but probably, if he can get there, which he won't, but it just, he shouldn't have this chance, Jim. No, he shouldn't. He could have even lobbed a knobler to make it 3D, but I guess... Oh, he's going to run down to the scoring threat. Let's go. Excellent. Oh, you love to see it. Does he do? Oh. oh. Not punished, because it's, it was always going to be fine. It's fine, and it was fine. It just wasn't fine, but it was fine. Yeah, I forgot the 2 plus. Yeah, 2 plus 5 plus 4 plus. Yeah. yeah. Fail the, fail the two. Classic. Which, yes, of all of them, it's the one that, yeah. But, you know, they're ogres. We did say at the start, Jim, that even if things looked good, it wouldn't be, and it wouldn't end good well. And sure enough, it hasn't been, and it didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's just got a 3D him, hasn't he? Like when my daughter comes downstairs smiling and I'm briefly convinced things might be all right. We should have known that even when things looked all right for the ogres, they would find a way to ogre it up completely. Why are we... Why? Why? What? Uh. <laughs> it's fair enough, isn't it? He's got a bit of a screen there. No, yes, you, you do have a knobler to take care of by the ball, so you do have to screen things properly. No, this is all fine. Yep. I'm slightly okay, saddened well. that the rackle piece couldn't finally have hit a knobler <laughs> on the final turn. Yeah, that would have stunned. been beautiful. <laughs> stunned. <laughs> Unable to take part. <laughs> it was his chance. Just imagine him going home, can't you? You, go, <laughs> you don't look very happy, Terry. No, Janice, I'm not. <laughs> Why am Terry? It was your big game. You, you've, you've skilled up for this. You've spent all season getting your, your tackle ready and your wrestle. Any of those little tiny dodgy things? Yeah, I saw plenty of them, Janice. What happened, Terry? <laughs> oh, I, I was marking Ogres. <laughs> I mean, it's just... The man's been humiliated. <laughs> <laughs> but the Norse won anyway. And perhaps Terry will get to tackle something another day. <laughs> oh, man, brilliant. Well, there you go, that was... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, congratulations to, I've already forgotten his name, the Norse guy. Um, commiserations, Anne Racker. Oh God, that was hilarious. <laughs> Thank you very Terribly much. Terribly sorry, don't watch the VOD. Uh, one entertaining <laughs> game of Blood Bowl you gave us this evening. Yeah. Don't watch the VOD. Yeah, don't don't watch the bud. Uh, but uh, don't watch the bud. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, PC. It's been pretty hilarious. <laughs> I enjoyed myself immensely. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and uh, wow, that was a 
That was a that was a lot of ones. Oh. That is that's yes that's the, all the ones. Yeah. That you borrowed some other people's and brought those along too. <laughs> um, but yeah, right. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. Be fantastic. <laughs>